Hi everyone and welcome to Kismet Rising. Today I am with you for your weekly oracle card reading and we are working with three oracle card decks this week. Uh, we have with us the Earth Warriors uh, Oracle. That's by Alana Fairchild. That's your number one deck. Um, then we have the second deck here, which is the Soulful Woman um, uh, Oracle deck. And I'm actually not sure who that's by. Um, actually, the name of the person is Shushan Movesian and Gemma Summers. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And then we have here another deck by Alana Fairchild, and it's the Crystal Mandala Oracle. So, uh, yes, your first one is the Earth Oracle, um, sorry, Earth Warriors Oracle. Then we have Soulful Woman here, and this is your Crystal Mandala Oracle. So please go ahead and make your selection, and you can go down to the description box below where you will find uh, the timestamp for the reading. Uh, I just want to mention that I'm uh, for those of you who would like to have readings or, or uh, energy treatments and all of that, uh, I'm going to be increasing the prices uh, uh, on my website uh, this month, actually this week. I'm going to be doing that and it's the first time that I'll be increasing these prices since uh, 2015. And um, I just wanted you, uh, if you wear wanting to book or you thought that you might want to then now is a good time to book um you can have the reading much later you can have it whenever you'd like to but uh the prices if you book now you will still have it at the old rate and i'm planning to do it by tuesday or wednesday uh so if you yeah if you if you have if you would like to then please go ahead and book right now and you'll have it at the old prices so yes um we can go right ahead and begin I'm going to start with your number one. That's right here. And once again, uh, for those of you who've chosen this one, it's the Earth Warriors Oracle by Alana Fairchild. I'm just going to give it a quick shuffle. And we're asking, um, what is it that those of you who've chosen this deck need to hear for the week ahead or for the time at which you've chosen to watch this video? And this feels right to me. And it's called uh, Pueo. And it's the guardian of the... Um, sorry, it's the guardian of the Auma, Aumakua. Okay. So, um, I don't know if you can read that clearly enough. Um, so, what I'm going to do is, uh, for today, is I'm going to consult the guidebook, yeah, for the the author's um, um, definition of this card and the meaning of this card. And I'm going to also uh, give you a guided uh, meaning of the card. So I'm going to channel the meaning for you. So I'm just going to go into the book. Um, the book, by the way, looks uh, like this. Okay. And so it's number 24 and it's and the message here is no matter how compelling an experience of challenge darkness or defeat may seem you have divine protection and the promise of safe passage through to the dawn you will see and hear the truth of the light you shall not be alone on this journey Soul guides now help you find your true worth. If you've been proceeding along a dangerous path, even unknowingly, Pueo will navigate you safely away from evil and ill-wishing, guiding you back to your higher purpose and sacred path. Okay, so once again, yeah, that's the guardian of the Aumakua. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing any of that correctly, uh, but I'm... Um, yeah, I'm attempting to. Um, so what I'm hearing, aside from, you know, your, the message here, which basically says that you are being guided and you actually are being protected during this time and you're going to be um, brought, you know, steered along um, the right path. What I'm hearing here and what I'm feeling is that all of this wisdom is within you. 
and you know what it is that you need to do uh, right at this moment. And you, it might have been difficult for you to actually do this in the last days or the last weeks. You might have felt that it's been a little bit turbulent. And even though you have knowledge of what it is that you should be doing or what it is that would serve you well, uh, it's been difficult for you to actually take those actions and take that path and to be actually to actually be able to live through that. Um, so what I'm hearing is, is here is that if you're feeling like you are veering too uh, you know along a de dangerous path as is mentioned in this um, in the guidebook, if you're feeling like you're spinning out of control, if you're feeling like things are not going according to plan in the way in which you expected it to go, then take a moment and come back to yourself and find the stillness within you. And from there on, you can proceed. Because one of the problems that, um, that one has at this moment is that the energy is really turbulent. You know, at the time of shooting this video, uh, the energy is very turbulent. It's like a storm and it's been like that for the last three weeks. And even if you come back to this uh, reading at a later point, uh, because I'm talking about the energy as I'm shooting it, it does not mean that the message is not relevant to you at a later point, uh, just so you know. But um, for those of you watching this when I uh, uh, in the week that I upload it, uh, basically, I want to say that it's really hard to come to focus and to know what it is that you need to hear if you aren't able to come to that point of stillness within yourself. So try to veer uh, away from the turbulence. Try to return to yourself. Try to return to that space within you which is quiet and which is all-knowing. Because you have within you the knowledge that you seek. You don't need to, to tap. You don't need to, to ask outside of yourself. You don't need to um, seek advice from others at this point. What I'm hearing is that you have everything that you need right now to be able to go forth and, and create the life that you need or to be able to come over this obstacle, to be able to get beyond this point. And in the next couple of weeks, I feel like the next three weeks, it will serve you really well to simply be with yourself, be in your stillness, be uh, within yourself. The other thing I'm hearing here is that there's no one really who can help you right now. You need to help yourself. This is a moment in which you need to acknowledge that you have the wisdom that's within you and that you have actually all that it takes to be able to make this happen. And yes, if you if you ask for help, it, they're not saying do not ask for help. They're not saying don't delegate if you need to. Uh, this is not what they're saying. But what they're saying is listen to you. Listen to the knowledge that you have within you because that is what's true. It's your reality is true for you. OK, and you may have others who would like to tell you what to do or what they think is best for you. But it isn't always going to be completely the truth that you need to find and tap in a tap. Um, yeah, from a tap uh, within yourself. So um, you have the knowledge, you have the wisdom, you have all that it takes and uh, this is if you're 13 or if you're 90 years old, it doesn't matter. You know, you have all that it takes. It doesn't come from experiences that you have in this lifetime. It comes from an all knowing that is part of a consciousness within which we all exist. And that is the energy and that is the knowledge that you need to tap into to be able to inform you of what action you need to take in your life in the next weeks or what it is that you need to know where it is that you need to find your peace from, okay? So I I hope that's been clear for you. Uh, I uh, Yeah, that message is very strong here, and I feel that sometimes you don't even need to take an action. Sometimes you just need to listen. Sometimes you just need to hear. Sometimes you just need to connect to that part of you which is greater than what you believe it to be. And the greater goodness that exists within you. Okay, so that was your message for those of you who've chosen this deck here, which was the Earth Warriors Oracle by Alana Fairchild. 
I hope that's helped you and that resonated with you. I just want to say one last thing here. You may believe that the, what you're hearing is just your imagination and you may not believe in it. You may think it's just a fantasy. But part of that fantasy is what you need to hear. Part of that fantasy has, has it has this, it's colorful. It has this rainbow aspect to it. It has many facets to it. And from all of that, you're going to be able to access the knowledge that you need. Okay. So yes, it's all within you. Go within, be still and hear. All right. So that was it for you. Those of you who've chosen this uh, first deck here. So moving on to uh, the next deck of cards here, um, this deck number two, that's your Soulful Woman cards. Uh, we are asking, what is it that you need to hear? Uh, what is your weekly oracle guidance? What is the message that you need to hear for those of you who've come to this reading today? So we have the card Love-Based Reality and the caption reads, I am soul nurtured when I surround myself with friends and family who support a love-based reality. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and read from the guidebook uh, first and uh, just as I've done in the other reading and hopefully uh, the message that you have, uh, that you need to hear it comes from there or from the uh, message that I will channel to you thereafter. So uh, this is uh, what that guidebook looks like, by the way. Okay, and um, your auth the author of this deck is Shushan Mavesian, or Mavesian. I don't know how you pronounce that, I'm sorry, and Gemma Summers. Um, so the card uh, reads from the guidebook, it reads, I'm soul nurtured whenever I surround myself with friends and family who support a love-based reality rather than a fear-based reality. I choose to devote myself to a reality that connects me to beauty, strengthens love in my life and inspires, empowers and fills me with joy. Nurturing a love-based reality sustains me in my life and keeps me buoyant whenever I face fears or self-doubt. It strengthens my capacity to be present and to be of greater service to life on the planet. I bow in deep appreciation to all the people who've supported me to be my best and believed in me. As I grow in love and compassion, I naturally reflect the light of these energies to all those around me. The card affirmation is, I am soul nurtured when I surround myself with friends and family who support a love-based reality. So, um, I think that I just want to make a comment on that message before I actually channel a message for you. I want to say that... Um, it's not always easy to be able to surround yourself with uh, people who embody love uh, or have a, a love vibration. Uh, you can't choose, you don't always choose your friends or your family. And even if you have, uh, it's, it's, they aren't always going to be necessarily in a, in a vibration of love that attracts goodness. Okay. But I think what it is that you need to hear here is that um, it's important for you to recognize when someone is projecting negativity and and to stay away from them or to separate yourself from them or to be able to shield yourself from this negativity. Um, 
you know, very often people say things without realizing the intonation or the um, the vibration that it carries. And you may um, project a thought that's pessimistic or you may not believe in yourself or you may not believe in a particular situation or you may be upset about a particular political situation. And the, the vibration of your words or your thoughts um, project something outside of you that is a reflection of that energy and it continues to travel you know it's like a reverberation it touches all those around you and I, what I'm hearing actually so here I'm channeling for you now um, what I'm hearing is that you need to take some responsibility for your thoughts and the words that you speak and you need to recognize the impact that it has on those around you. And likewise, you need to recognize the impact that the thoughts and the words of those around you have on you. All of, all of us have uh, as our essence love. Okay. And it is shaded by fear or by negativity or by thoughts of anxiety or not thoughts of anxiety but of anxiety and thoughts of simply pessimistic thoughts and as a result we become clothed or robed in fear and in negativity and we forget our essence which is love and this card is speaking directly to returning to that love that exists within you and understanding yourself only in terms of love and understanding that what your fears are but recognizing that your fears are small and that love overcomes it and if you've been giving credence to your fears if you've been allowing your fears to take hold in your life and to grow greater than it is if you've been worshiping your fears and your anxieties and actually allowing them to take control then it's time to regain that space it's time to fill yourself out with love again and to just try to keep to try to maintain that state of being which is true love and and that part of you which is only love how does this translate into being well the simplest way I think that this translates into being is by recognizing your thoughts or recognizing what words you speak. You know, are you making negative comments about the weather or about political situations or about schools or studies or your work environment? Where is it that you think that it's okay to be emo or to be cool and um, you are reflecting something outside of you which is not your truth which does not belong to you this card or this message is asking you to return to that of you which is love and that of you which is your essence which is pure which is knowing and which is hopeful and which understands that all is working in accordance with the divine plan and to truly believe in that and to truly have faith in that. And when you are sitting in a vibration truly of love, then it's easy for you to recognize that. So the guidance here is to also start peeling away the fears which you've used to shield you, which you've used as a defense mechanism, which you've used to protect you from being yourself because being in your essence of love means stepping out into the world and being in a space of vulnerability and living in this world in the true sense of vulnerability that one has is extremely dangerous and it can be it can be really uh, destructive it can be really painful so we shield ourselves with our fears we adopt the mindsets or the perceptions that others have or may have lent us, whether they be parents 
or employers or employees or teachers or just friends. And we take them on in order to protect us because we cannot step out into this world in vulnerability just as it is, or at least we believe that we cannot. And then we have this fear. But this card is saying, this message is saying, it's okay to seek love. It's okay to be in your essence of love. And it's okay to step out with this vulnerability and to be true to the love that is you. And in doing so, seek those who match your vibration. Seek those who match your love vibration. It's okay to take a break from those who don't. It's okay to let them uh, aside for the moment. They'll catch up later, perhaps. Or perhaps your love and your essence will infuse them with the, the same type of love and they will remember their own essence and their own vulnerability. And they will have faith and courage to be able to step out in the world also in this vulnerability. So that is your message for those of you who've chosen this card here. It's uh, the second option. It's basically, and the message here once again, it says, I am so nurtured when I'm surround myself with friends and family who support a love-based reality. And basically take responsibility for your for you being for your love and for you stepping out into the world and sharing love with others. And then surround yourself with others who have the same essence or the same vibration and are not afraid to show it. And if you're not finding any of these people around you right now, it's okay. You don't need to at this moment. It's not absolutely necessary. Once you start projecting this vibration, once you stay in your essence of love, you will find that you will attract people who have a similar vibration to your own. And protect yourself from those who do not have that vibration. Protect yourself from those who say things that hurt your feelings or that may have been harsh. Uh, understand that um, where it comes from is their own fear. And most of the time, they are trying to protect you, but they're doing it from their own fear. And so this card really talks about a healthy approach to life and a, and a healthy attitude to life, one that's based on love and recognizing when fear is playing a role and understand its context so that you can move beyond it. So I thank you for those of you who've chosen this card and this um, deck here. And I'm moving on now to the next one. So for those of you who've chosen uh, this deck here, it's the third deck. And it's the Crystal Mandala Oracle by Alana Fairchild. Uh, we are asking today, what is it that we need to know right now what is our message for this week or what is our message for whenever we've come to watch this what is it that we need to know right now what is the pivotal information that we need to have in order to impact our lives or to affect our lives effectively So we have here the Ascended Master, White Matthew, and Dan Burite. And the, the, mess, the, uh, the name of the card is Original Self, and it's Crystal Masters 333. So this is the stone of, uh, this is Dan Burite. And we have the energy of the Ascended Master, White Matthew. And just as I've done in the other readings uh, in this week's oracle, I'm going to uh, take a note, to uh, read the note from the guidebook, from the author, and, and then I'm going to channel um, a message for you. And for those of you who are curious, uh, this is what the 
guidebook looks like. So the message here is the following. We bring you the blessing of original self. As you progress through your life, learning and growing, you gain wisdom and strength. You grow more radiant and authentic, true to who you are. And as this happens, many of the layers of identity begin to fall away. What you once believed yourself to be is shown to be not much more than clothing your soul wore for a time. You have outgrown it. It is no longer a good fit. It constrains too much, doesn't reflect your personality, vibrancy, uniqueness and beauty. So you discard it. Perhaps you were able to move more spiritually naked. Oh, apologies, I've read that wrong. It says, perhaps you are able to move more spiritually naked. The sense of who you are becomes simpler. You are just you. Others may or may not get you. But nonetheless, you are just, you are still just you. You are freeing yourself from the projections of others, of the world, and simply living as your original radiant divine self. So I feel that this message is, is pretty um, clear. And it speaks much of um, one being able to choose oneself and return to oneself. And it sort of um, ties in with the messaging uh, from the, the, the deck number two. And uh, it talks about returning to oneself and allowing oneself to, to be who one really is. So basically here, the message that I believe this card is trying to speak of is it's asking you, uh, to let go, to let go of that persona of which you have used, which does not belong to you anymore. And I want to return and talk about the energy of this weeks, these last weeks and this eclipse season that we're in. For those of you watching this when I've uploaded it, um, this energy has been really interesting and turbulent, but it has been asking us to return to who we are to strip back, strip away, come back to our core, make ourselves naked, take away that which does not belong to us. You know, as children, we are taught how to be in this world, how we need to be in the office of a bureaucrat, or how it is that we need to behave at school, or how it is we need to behave in an employment, in, an, in a work environment. We have particular roles that we play in each one of these environments. And in doing so, we lose a little bit of ourselves. This is not to say that we cannot be, behave appropriately within a given context. But what is it that we lose when we are not completely ourselves? And what is it that we do not bring forth into this world when we are not completely ourselves? If every single person on this planet truly was who they were, we would be the most beautiful, most colorful, and most healthy planet. But we are not. We choose to do what we think we should, what we've been told we should do. We do not hear what our truth is. We do not hear what it is that we ought to be. We want to be the same. We want to be like the others. And in the process, we lose that which is special about us, that which is unique about us, that which shines so beautifully. And if we were to step back into that part of us, which is authentic and real, the original self, as this card is named, and we had to give that to the world, Yes, perhaps it would be a bit quirky. Perhaps others may think it's weird. Perhaps it would not be accepted immediately. But you would be giving the gift of you to those around you. 
I feel that this is the card that signals the beginning of this, of that. For those of you who've chosen this, you understand the changes that have been going on inside of you in these last weeks. You recognize the shift in you. And you recognize that you've come to the end of a road, that it's time to give up what you've been doing and actually step into what it is that you need to be in this world as you are. It's time for you to take control and to simply be, regardless of what others expect of you, regardless of how they will see you or how they will react to you or how uncomfortable you may feel within a given situation. Can you simply just go out and dance on the street? Can you simply go out and say what you really want to say, what's truly on your mind? Can you tap into that of you, which is truly you, which has no, which is not at all what you've been taught and has nothing to do with what anyone else is, but that aspect which is truly you, this magic that exists within you and that is only you, and can you share that with the world? Because that is the original self. And when we share our original self with others, it's almost as if we contaminate others. And it's an intoxifying, an intoxif oh, what is the word? It's an intoxication. Is that a word? I've forgotten. <laughs> Pardon me. When I'm channeling, I don't know English anymore. But it's almost like, um, it's almost like it spreads. It's, it spreads and it contaminates and it, it, but in the most positive way possible. And other, it ca catches on to others as well. And they cannot help but be their original self. They cannot help but be the most honest that they can be within a particular context. It's contagious. Sorry, that's the word I was looking for. It's contagious uh, and it contaminates, but it contaminates with this, it kind of um, intoxicates. And it makes everyone drunk with this, ability with this magic with their own magic you know you don't need alcohol or any kind of drug to be able to get you into this high you simply need to be yourself but be truly your authentic self and not wear a role because you have to and not take the chance take the risk and be yourself and see what comes from there Perhaps you take the risk of being yourself in your work environment and you can no longer work there. But what proceeds, or what follows, is the ability to just truly be yourself in every given context. And you reintroduce the magic into your life. I'm not um, advising you to, to go and do anything radical and actually you know, leave your jobs or anything like that. But what I'm saying is that what we need to do is tap back into that magic, which is what is special about us, what is unique about us. And once we've done that and we are able to be that person in this world, it becomes contagious. And we must be our authentic selves. We must be our original selves. There is no room or anything else. Anything else is just a facade. Anything else is just a mirage. Uh, a mirage. Apologies for my English once again. And it's an illusion. How are we living in this life at this moment? Are we living in an illusion? Or are we living as our original selves? And I'm going to leave you with that for today. So thank you for those of you who've come by to listen to this message. I hope that it resonates with you. 
and I hope that it informs you in the way that you need to be informed and I'm wishing you all very very well and so much love and infinite blessings blessings abound my friends